Hey everyone, how's it going? <laughs> hi, hi birdie. You can say hi on the chat if you want. Hi, 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 happy Sunday. Hi Andy. Hello. Um, Dayev. Hello. Dale, Natalia. Fai. Fui. Jacopo. Elisa. Yay. Daria. Hey. Family's here. Let's do some pumpkin carvings today. What you guys think? <laughs> um, uh, for those of you who don't know, I'm Leticia Gillett. And this stream is sponsored by Lenovo. Thank you, Lenovo. And this is the archetype channel. But today, we're not going to do any archetype. Well, it could be archetype, pumpkin archetype. But we're going to do some uh, carving. So here's the thing, though. If you feel comfortable, open your ZBrush and carve some pumpkins with me, OK? I'm going to go slow. It's going to be very casual. And uh, I was hoping that you guys will carve some pumpkins with me. And then we will share to each other what we did just for fun. What do you guys think? It's going to be very basic. I'm going to show you all how I'm going to sculpt the pumpkin so you can follow that. And then we can do any type of faces we want on our pumpkins. And you can go crazy on it. All right. So who is with me? Put some, put some like yes or yay on the chat if you're going to sculpt with me because I'm excited to see what you're all going to do if you, if you feel like it. I know it's Sunday, but this is a fun task. It's not, I'm not asking for anything crazy, <laughs> I hope. Um, so yeah, let's start sculpting. So I'm going to start blocking the pumpkin. It's way too late there. I'm sorry. Well, I'll just watch it then. Just have fun. Maybe you can sculpt it another another time when you rewatch the the stream and things like that. All right, let's do it. I'm going to share my screen. I'm going to start a pumpkin from scratch. And again, uh, well, yep, ring is there. Nice, awesome. So, um, I put here a few shapes, different shapes of pumpkins um different sizes and things like that so you know this is a cartoon channel so we're gonna you know push those shapes and stuff see how many illustrations normally a pumpkin has some of them has like this big ones and then smaller things some of them have a little more like um on the surface type of details so let's do just like a basic one for now something like like this one, for example, just for now, and see and see how it goes. Cool. So what I have here, just gonna change my background to a uh, lighter color, like this. And what I have here now is is just Dynamesh sphere, really. You see, it's just Dynamesh. Um, doesn't matter. We're just gonna block some illustrations, but before we start that, we're just going to uh shape a little bit. Well, actually, no, let's block the illustrations and then we can shape it. So, a very easy way to do that instead of having to do something like this, where we go around like marking one by one like this, we can use radio symmetry. I don't know if you guys have play with that, but uh, I'm just going to change my focal length to 60. All right. And then you can go to transform. And then there is an R here for radio symmetry. And then we can choose how many you're going to see what happens. Press it. And then it's going to divide by eight. So what happens now, you see, is that it's dividing by eight and also is on the wrong axis. So we want actually in uh, Y. Whoops, not on both, just on Y. Yeah, so you see now is the divide by eight, so it's gonna divide by eight. Um could be cool. Let's try 10 just to uh, add a little more. And then we can come from up here and just start uh slicing those shapes. I think 10 is better, so a bit more stylized. Um 
right so just gonna come here and i'm using uh you can use any brush to do that but i'm just using my um image cut uh, smooth a little not so sh sharp just smoothies and um, you can pass along with the lower intensity also and just do a little more organic like it doesn't need to be so straight you can just go around a little bit <laughs> like this i don't know what happens here in the end of the pumpkin but i'm assuming it all meets meets this here all right so now we have some pumpkin serration i have a little hole here because i'm gonna fix it's gonna give a little mess on this area so we don't see that hole and we can just pass around here again we're gonna change don't worry to make it few too perfect because you know it's organic thing so we don't need to make it perfect I think that's that's good enough now we can get to even with the radio brush we can get here and we just push it in a little bit this top area the bottom is pushed as well I'm not sure but i'm gonna do it anyways cool something like that like this okay so now we have some shape going on now I'm going to go back to my uh, regular symmetry, just regular symmetry, and then we're going to do some, some shaping. Cool. Um, let me grab some water. All right. Okay, so let's do um, one basic shape for now, maybe something like this. And we add more serrations, as you can see, we can... Um, you know, we're doing very stylized right now, which is fine, but we can add a few more later. Uh, or let's see if we add it now, since we have such a simple shape, we could potentially um, just like lightly start adding a bit of like some, some read like this, just to make it, you know, and I'm, I'm not, I don't have very high res uh, Dynamesh, so we can add a few more um, later on, but maybe something like that, just to create a little bit of surface noise. Okay, and then I'm gonna go back to my regular symmetry. And now we're just gonna shape this a little bit. So um, push this baby in. And don't worry if she starts breaking becoming too organic that's the idea you know um let's make it feel organic as as much as we can if this is much more pushed in like this yep that's looking good cool all right and then um i don't know how you call this in english the stem or I'm going to call the stem, but I don't know if that's the proper word. But for that piece, we can use radio symmetry as well. We can just, I'm going to add a sphere again. So I'm going to pan the Dynamesh sphere. Actually, that's not a Dynamesh sphere. That's just a regular sphere. <clears throat> we can switch for a cleaner sphere for now. And then we can down make a little shape like this you can crop the top remember if you hold control and you drag on the on the uh, scale you can kind of like crop like this and same thing i'm going to use radial symmetry to add those little details so i'm going to go here and i'm just going to start pulling whoops Know, symmetry for pulling like this i might not have enough um apology but that's fine just trying to make some shape here 
something like this, and then we can make some menstruation. Maybe. I'm going to subdivide so we have to follow it for it. More density, something like that. It's going to be cool. Yeah, no bad, no bad, no bad. All right, then can like make a little bit of those little details there. Okay. And then turn off symmetry here and just shape a little more. A little wider base here. Bring this down. Center. Do you guys have any questions about what I'm doing or anything at all? Feel free to send them in the chat and we can we can chat about it. Today's supposed to be this sorry, a fun day for us to chat and do some carving. So let me know if you have any questions. Okay, okay, it's coming. All right. And I'm not thinking too much of stylized, like I'm just kind of copying what I'm seeing for now, but we can we can play around later with like sizes and structure of things and such things. I never done 3D pumpkin carving, so this is fun because every year I think about doing it and then I never do it. <laughs> All right. So we got pumping. Pump the cake pumping. And uh yeah, let's put some color and some kick shader. So I'm not gonna use this shade. I'm gonna put a skin shader on it. What's your favorite Halloween movie? Mm, yay. I think I really love uh, The Nightmare Before Christmas. Um, of course, I'm very cliche. I love Nightmare Before Christmas. Um, I love the songs. Right now, I'm sculpting this pumpkin and it's singing. I'm, I'm singing in my hair. So <laughs> that's what's going on in my head right now. Um, yeah, I think it's Nightmare Before Christmas, Alisa. What about you? What is your favorite? Tell me. What are your all favorite movies? Halloween movies. I was listening to the soundtrack this week. Yes. Such a good movie, man. I loved it. I remember me and my cousin when we were kids. We just love so much that that movie we watch all the time. Some people consider Christmas movie. Yes, I would say it's both. It's so beautiful that it's both at the same time. <laughs> it's a Christmas movie. It's a Halloween movie. Yep. Um. All right. We got a pumpkin. I also love the nightmare before Christmas, but Caroline is also one of the top of my list. Yes, Caroline, it's awesome. I remember um being a bit too scared of Caroline, even though I wasn't that young when it came out. <laughs> but it was intense for me. I'm I don't have a good heart for Halloween movies, like intense Halloween movie. Only cutesy like you know, um, like Hocus Pocus and that kind of level of movie, I can do it, but I don't do very well with the intense ones. Yeah, I'm not someone that goes to like haunted houses or anything like that. But yeah, I guess care pretty easily with stuff. Life is scary on itself, you know what I mean? Like. <laughs> I don't need to get scared more than I already am of life. So I try not to scare myself too much. <laughs> what I'm doing here is a little dark orange on the crevices just to give a little more readability, like a stylization feeling. If you see here on the image, it almost feels like that because you see, like it's a little darker inside. 
And I'm doing one by one because, again, if I, it becomes a bit more organic if you do it like so. Uh, I can do horror or haunted houses. Yeah, same, Andy. I like. I do not have the heart for it. Adam Stanley is amazing. I love Adam Stanley too. Love it, love it, love it. Um, could you please tell me how to save a customized brush and how you could reduce the object size without losing the details and have a reasonable poly count? Yeah, we can do some, some zero mesh it here. Um, to reduce something, there's two ways, right? You can use, actually there are three ways. You can use DynaMesh, you can use zero mesh, you can use um, triangulation as well, tessellation. I think it's called tessellation Z brush or decimation, I can't remember. But you can use those techniques to, to go down a level. Uh, you know, the, the tessellation, it, it holds the details pretty well. Um, so you can try that. Um, but if you're planning to still sculpt on the model, uh, I would say probably zero mesh or, or dyna mesh would be the best idea. There's a new Harry Slick movie coming out on Netflix this month. I'm really excited. It's called Window and Wild. Oh, yeah, I saw I saw the posters. I haven't seen the trailer yet, but I've seen the posters, and it looks amazing. Yep, yep. To save a brush, if you make a brush, let's say, um, Amira, since you asked, like, let's say I make a new brush. You can come here uh, on the brush palette here. Okay, or you can come on a brush up here and you can say, uh, save us, you see? So whatever new brush you make, you, you can clone this brush, for example, clone it, and then you can edit something that you want and then you just save it. It's all here on the brush, brush panel. Cool. Yeah, that's pretty cool, um, Lisa. I want I want to see that one too. Oops. Uh, mm -mm. All right. I think Pop Pumpkin has some nice variation of color now. If we want it, we could even like pick a little, just for fun, because th this is a very fun moment here. So you see how I put those crevices color, and it feels a little more rich overall. And we can do the same thing here on the on the stem where we can pick a little darker color and just paint on the base a little bit like this and then paint a little bit on the crevices as well just to create again some textural feeling on it and just go around like doing like this yeah of course amira no problem if it's not clear enough what i said let me know okay i'll explain it um Something like that, and we can get some more greenish dark color and also and paint a little bit crevices. All right, you see, so it starts getting a little, little more fun. I, I painted too much here, just gonna take a little bit. All right, cool. So, if we want to get some of this, like uh dots variation in the pumpkin you see there's like some dots and like some textural feeling um one thing we can do also uh we can get a brush that is more like a, a spark sparkle brush like this you see so it's like i change the stroke to color spray 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 and then i change the alpha for uh a, you know dot alpha and then you can get the color and just make a bit darker. And then we can go around and just like slowly, like if I do intense, you're gonna see what's going on, see? Like darker, but I'm just gonna go slowly around, like just add a little bit of it just for fun. We're here to have fun today. You know what I mean? I mean, every day we're here to have fun, but um, today especially, it's just a matter of having some fun. So I'm just gonna making these areas a bit darker and adding some dots around. Make it darker here in the bottom. 
and uh, something like that. So now we have those little dots, you see. And we can go to a lighter color as well and do just a few light dots as well. Jace, you're doing chores, Jace? Sunday is not time for that, Jace. Okay? Shame on you. It's time to carve pumpkins, Jace. Not do chores. So we're doing some pumpkins here, Jay. And we're putting some textures on it, some color. I think our pumpkin is looking pretty decent now. Check it out. Uh, Victoria, hello, Leticia. Like your work, style school, and also your block art course is very useful. Thank you. Yeah, of course, Victoria. Thank you. Thank you for letting me know. Always fun to let know when to know when people enjoy. The stuff you do comes from a good place in my heart. I'm putting some more green here, just so it's not completely brown. So I'm just adding some sparks of green here. Now we have a cute pumpkin. It's very, um, not too cartoony, but it's all right. It doesn't need to be too much. And remember, our topology is pretty, pretty low res. So, we can subdivide, it doesn't matter. Um, Victoria asks, do you always use perspective when sculpting a ZBrush? Why is it important? I do always use perspective. I think it's important because we see the world in perspective, you know? So at the end, normally, when you're going to do a render of a model, you will add perspective. So why not just model in perspective, you know what I mean? I normally use lenses of like, if you see here in my document, uh, I'm using a 60 millimeter lens. Sometimes I like 85 when it's more like a portrait. The bigger the number, the flatter the lens will be. So uh, I normally like to use something like 60, 70 because I like flat lenses. But uh, that's the main reason I like to scope in perspective just because that's how we see things in the world and, and, and uh, that's how we're normally gonna render. We're gonna render in perspective. So um, yeah, well, sometimes I do turn off perspective just to kind of feel like the feeling of the model without it, but very rare I model anything without perspective, you know, uh, just for the reasons I just said, so. Cool? All right. All right, we got a pumpkin. Let's move on. Uh, let me save it. It's always good. Where is it? Normal stream. I'm going to put here. Um, in. And I'm going to put here, I'm going to call it pumpkin base. And now let's put some cool faces on our pumpkins. So I'm going to subdivide the body just because uh, I'm going to use a few different techniques that I want to test it out, which one works best for carving stuff. So a few ideas I have. So I'm going to subdivide this body uh, one, two times. So you can see it's, it's much denser now. Do something like that. And then I'm going to subdivide this just a bit also so it looks prettier. All right. I'm uh, also going to clone this too, so we can have it saved. Um, not clone, sorry, copy, so we can have a, a one saved here if we need to go back or anything like that. So one technique I thought for us to use to carve uh, our face here is um, masking first. So this is what I thought. I'm going to do some masking. So... I'm gonna do something like this for the eyes. Cool. And then for the mouth cut out, um, let me think what kind of mouth I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do a funny one, like she has a part of a mouth like this, maybe. Or let's try something a little more, um, what's the word, traditional. 
Hmm. Let me think. Nah, I'm gonna do my cute mouse instead, like this. Okay, so this is our mouth. And you can do without symmetry. If you do without symmetry, it will probably look even better. But I want to keep a little tooth here. So I'm going to remove a tooth. Just make it scary. It's not my thing. It's not my thing. I like everything cute. All right. So this is the mouth. I'm already breaking symmetry here. Four for say. We all know that in Portuguese, with cute means fofo. It's cute. So yeah, that's my jam. It's my jam. All right. So I'm making a little bit of a mouth here. Jean Jean, are you sculpting? Are you carving anything? Join us. Some carving. All right. Whoops. Let me pop this teeth. Maybe we can make a little. Thing. Nah, I think that's enough. Let's test it out. So this is like the shape we're doing for the face. So one technique I thought for us to carve this shape would be extraction. So I'm going to invert the mask like this. And I'm going to go to extract. But instead of adding thickness to my extraction, by default, if I click extract, right, it's going to extract some thickness which is fine, we want thickness, but I wanna try something um, a bit cleaner. So what I thought is we do zero thickness, and then we do an extract, and then we say accept. So now what we have is this, right? It's like there's no thickness, which is fine because what I thought is, um, wait, where's my painting go? Didn't come with the painting. Let me see. Oh, I think I need to project the painting. Let's project the painting. Um, all right, so I'm going to clean the mask and I'm just going to project the painting into the other model. I thought it would go with it, but I guess not. So um, project, and then I don't need to project geometry because this came from the same geometry. So I'm going to turn it off and just going to say project color. Boom. And uh, would you like to project poly painting? Yes, that's what I'm doing, baby. So now we can see we have the paint. But the cool thing is that this new ZBrush version, I think since the 2021 or 22, you can go to geometry and you can turn on dynamic subdivision, which we all know is to subdivide stuff, great. But we can also add um, thickness. Check it out. So, this is a dynamic thickness, so that means that it's clean. We're not going to mess it up. We, we can mess it up if we want to, but, you know, we can apply this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some thickness and the offset's going in, so it's carving in. So the offset is going out or it's going in. I put, I put minus 100 and then it goes in like this. And uh, also, you see how, like, sharp the edges are? You can change that if you turn off the smooth button here. Wait, why is it okay? I think you gotta add a few segments. Smooth. Oh, it's because I don't have some divisions. What is it not doing? Well, I guess aligned. Uh, so, you know, it depends how deep you want. So I'm going to like make maybe deep like this. Now we have the carved shape on it. It's cool. Let's see how it's looking. So let me turn off my pumpkin body here. Now we have that, which is our, you know, little thingy. If we do shift D, you can see the without thickness. So we can come here and just like fix a little bit if we want some more sharper edges on stuff. You can just come here. This is one way I was thinking of doing the carving. If you all have any other ideas on how to make the clean carve like this, let me know. 
Okay, so we have that. And now I'm going to press D again. Then we have our little pumpkin here. And uh, now let's let's break the shape a little bit, make a bit more fun. So uh, you know, right now it's pretty pretty standard shape, but we're doing cartoon. Oh no, your zebrush crashing me. Zhang, Zhang Zhang, Sunday is now time to freelance Zhang Zhang. Okay, I'm gonna tell this right now. Okay. If you have any love for yourself, you don't do freelance on the Sunday, Jin Zhao, okay? And I love you. I don't want you freelancing on the weekend, all right? So, quit it. All right, so I'm going to push this, and I'm going to make a bit more fun. Push maybe this up like this, and give a little more body here. Trying to have some fun. Make a little bit of a shape like that. Then it starts to feeling a bit more cartoony. <laughs> so, what do you guys think of this technique? Um, I think it worked decent. <laughs> Let's see how I say. We can do also like uh, play a little more with this. Like since he is a little kid with the teeth, uh, with the tooth here, we can give a little more cutesy, like fun idea of this. Maybe this thing is his little hair. So to like little hair shape like this. Let's see, it's going to go to the front a little more. Maybe it goes thinner. With the bang. Good, good, Jojo. That's what I like to hear. <laughs> a free lens on the Sunday. Are you crazy? Trying to kill me here? All right. And one thing that is cute also, it's like, whoops, push it too far. See, that way. There's sometimes there's like some little vines that stays on the stem. Like, like I don't know if I have it anywhere here, but uh, I've seen in cartoons at least. Like, I just gonna make this a little uh, greener. So I have a brush here. So if you want to adjust the color that you painted, you want to change the hue or whatever it is that you want to change, the easiest way to do so is to, you go to poly paint, is it poly paint, and then you press adjust colors. And then as you can see, you can change the color here. So I'm going to add a bit more green to it. You see, it's going here, add a bit more green, say okay. And now we have a little greener stem. We can also saturate it. So if you go back to adjust colors, you can saturate a bit more. There you go. Nice. Um, what is, oh yeah, let's add some vines on this. So I'm going to get a, um, a brush, which is going to be the curve tube, curve tube brush. And with that, we can make some little shapes like this, you see, to pretend they're like little vines. Oh, hey, yo, FIFO. Felipe said, I learned the adjust colors here in your life, and now I use all the time. It's very good, right? I even put on my UI here. So if I click here, you can see there's a button here now called adjust colors my painting area because I use it all the time because I paint a color and then I'm like oh what if I want to saturate a bit more so I can click on my pumpkin I go to that button and then I can just say uh saturation and then you increase the saturation say okay done 
instead of having to repaint everything like we used to do it on the dark ages before this button. All right, so let's get some clay tube here. I'm gonna make it a bit small and we can try to like, what is inverted? Oh, I'm in the right, wrong place. Something like that. I wanna make it smaller even. So like something like this. No, that's fine. That's all right. And then I can just, you know, move it a little to create a little more gesture on it. You can see that I'm on silly mode today, silly mood. And that's because why not, right? Sometimes it's fun to be silly and just let your heart play. Yeah, something like that. And we can make it green. Greeny. This. So that's his little flyaway hair or something. That. I think we have one pumpkin done. I kind of like it how this got dark. So I'm just going to use my favorite button, adjust colors. I'm just going to. Lower the intensity to make a bit darker. Like this. Yeah, that's more contrasty. So we have our first pumpkin. If you want to take this, for example, to Marmoset, we could take it now and put some lighting in just for fun. Um, but if you want to take it, obviously, uh, the dynamic subdivision is, it's you know, you got to bake it. You got to apply to it so you can have those shapes in it. Um, so I'll do it now just to show. So I'm going to, going to copy. Eh, need to copy. All right. So I'm just going to say apply. So now the thickness is applied. It's not a modifier anymore. If you see here, I can come and like, uh, start smoothing a little bit, some shapes. So it's not so sharp. So we can go around smoothing a bit. And, uh, smooth inside as well. Just a little, doesn't need to be much. Like this. Cool. Yeah, so you can see that. That's a, a little, you know, soft, a bit more organic. One thing we could try also is to add some bump detail on it. So, let's go smooth here a bit. Um, right. Put some bump detail. So one way to add like overall bump is if we use, I'm showing a lot of fun stuff here. If we use the deed of the, what's the name of that? It's a surface. You go to surface and you can add a surface noise on it. Boom. So you can see here, like if we, if we study our subject here, let's find one. This one is good. You can see that there is like a, a lighter light noise overall breaking the specular, right? It's not like a completely perfect shiny thing. As you can see, there's a bunch of little bumps and stuff going on. So what I'm going to do is try to mimic that using, um, you know, the noise inside ZBrush. So you can see there is a noise here, which is pretty good, actually. I'm just going to make sure that the scale is a bit bigger bit bigger like this maybe and um i don't want the color on it so we can go here and say color blend set to zero now it's easier to see what's going on, right so we have noise to make a bit bigger but it's too intense so i'm going to decrease the strength just leave a little bit like this you see so now we have, it's going to break the specular when we get to Marmoset. And it's going to be just beautiful. It's just amazing. You see? So I'm going to say, so the thing about this noise, just like what we did with the thickness, it's, it's a modifier, right? So for us to apply this noise to the mesh, you say, okay. So right now you can see on the viewport is there. But this is just, imagine this is doing like a bump. It's not actually on the topology applied. For you to apply to mesh, you gotta come here and say apply to mesh. 
So I'm going to say apply to mesh, boom. And you can see that it, the noise became a bit more low res. That's because of the density of our mesh. So for it to apply as a displacement, you actually have to have density. So if I go back, I'm going to go Control Z. I'm going to subdivide one time my thing. And I'm going to say apply noise. You see that the noise respects a little more now. And that is good because obviously I subdivide my mesh. So I have more topology now to support that detail that it got applied. You see? So look how cool it looks. Sometimes I might have been too light on the detail because when you put lighting, um, sometimes it's nice to have a bit stronger, but see what happens. And I'm actually going to do the same thing on the vine. I'm going to subdivide my vine here. I go to noise, uh, and I'm going to add a bit more noise to it just because, um, you know, it has some like bumpiness and some interesting stuff going on. So I'm just going to do that as well. So again, I'm going to make the noise kind of big to kind of break the silhouette things. I'm going to turn off this, this color thing so we can see what's going on, right? So we can make the scale kind of like that. The strength, again, I, I can put just a smidge to kind of break the light. I'm going to say OK, and I'm going to say Apply to Mesh. And because I don't have resolution again, I'm going to have subdivide and apply, and now you can see that the noise got applied there. Uh, maybe I'll put one more time and apply again just to break a little more. You see, if I keep turning on and applying, it starts like it's almost multiplying the details that I did. But I can do the same thing on the body, actually. We can turn on the noise again and say apply again, and it's going to get stronger, see? But it's too much. I'm going to keep it that way. I want a bit more soft and cartoony. Okay, uh, let's go to Mars. See, see what happens. Um, oops, what am I doing? Uh, I think I want to paint a bit more, but let's test it out in Mars first. So again, I'm gonna break a little more the the, the uh, symmetry of stuff. Maybe the eyes are not perfect symmetrical. Like I'm gonna make one a bit bigger, and this one is a bit. Smaller like this, and uh, something like that. I think it's cute. What do you guys think? All right. So let me name. Important to name things, even though we only have two pieces. It's nice to name. So I'm gonna name here pumpkin, and I'm gonna name name this one stem. All right. And let's go to Melissa. Save it. And uh, all right. Super cute, right? Super easy also. We did pretty fast. So, uh, all right. So I'm going to go to uh, Z plugin, FBX, export, and uh, where it's pumpkin folder. I'm going to create a folder called Marmoset just so we can start putting stuff there. And I'm going to call this is going to be called cute pumpkin. And we can make a few more pumpkin. Baking. All right, file exported. Let's open Marmoset. All right. That's what I like to hear. Cute, cute, fofo. <laughs> okay. So in one set, we're going to import our baby. Where is it? Pumpkin, cute pumpkin. All right, here's our baby pumpkin. You can see already that the detail we put when the highlight hits, look how cool it looks. And it has all that detail in there. God damn. All right, now let's just look for one for reference here. And uh, okay, so first of all, um, I'm gonna put a little floor shadow catcher. So if you go to view, no, sorry, scene, uh, add object shadow catcher, then it creates a little plane. 
this little plane here is going to catch some shadows for us, which is nice. Cool. Our light right now, it's uh, kind of like in the trail inside area. We can try to find something a little more spooky. Something darker so we can put a light inside of him. I think that could be cool. So we can put like a nighttime sort of vibe. Let's see this one. This one is interesting. We can do something like this. Okay. I'm going to put the light on the front just so we can uh, adjust the materials. So if I double click my object, I go to my pumpkin material. And I can say, uh, instead of albedo and the albedo, I put vertex color. So it turns on the vertex color. Same thing I'm going to do on the stem. Vertex color, here we go. Nice. And if I turn on, um, hi, Marcia. How's it going? We're making some pumpkins here. Um, all right, so if I turn on ray trace, you can see what's going on already, right? Check it out. Just our AGRI, our skylight is creating the shadows because it has a few lights. If you notice, it has like one light here, a few lights on the street, so you can see what's going on there. So that's nice. We can rotate a little sideways or something like this to create, you know, any light that comes from the side of the face is gonna create this more mysterious kind of like two-sided, one light, one dark kind of feel. So um, I can I can do that. You see the difference? You put a light from the front, but then you put it on the side, you kind of create those harsh shadows. This is very cool. So you can do something like this. One thing we need to figure it out also is that this is very shiny pumpkin. So we can play with the roughness on it and make a little rougher. Not too much, but just a little bit. You can see here now. Same thing on the stem, I'm gonna make it rougher. Overall, I think the stem is even rougher. And now let's put a little light inside. Um, might be too dark overall, let me brighten it up the scene a bit. Okay, I have that going on. Um, and, you know, I'm using the skylight for now, but we can create a little setup of lights if you want to showcase our model as well. It's, it's cool. Uh, but if we wanted to put a light inside, right, so I'm going to make it actually the scene, keep it darker. This, and then I'm going to come to scene, add object, and then I'm going to add a light. And I'm going to add an omni light. Omni light is a point light that emits light for every angle. So we're going to create an Omni, you can see here, it's in the front, but we want that inside. So check it out. It's glowing. All right. So we're going to put the light inside like this. And uh, for that, I think we need to do some research here. I'm going to put pumpkin in. Um, carved light inside just to see like how he works how he feels because there's some translucency on the pumpkin material itself so we're not going to make the pumpkin material completely matte because you can see here that the meat of the pumpkin right the inside meat kind of glows a bit that's because it's translucent look at the teeth translucency see so we got to keep that in mind also, we should put, uh, let me see the intensity of this light here. All right, so we have that. We can add, make the light a bit yellow as well, the tone of the light. Marcia said, Marcia said, just saw that you use some noise on this cute little pumpkin. Do you think it's good to use noise on cartoon character skin also? Yeah, Marcia, do what your heart wants. You know what I mean? It's cool. As long as you feel it's working, it's always fun to experiment, you know? Um, the people yesterday on Omen was saying Marmoset bad here, Disney employer showing Marmoset good render before placing it on Real Engine. Um, not sure I understand, but 
I love marmoset, you know, you just follow, just do what you love. Uh, yeah, PBR and marmoset is very good for test renders. For me, I use it as final render because like, I'm not too concerned to make beautiful renders or anything like that. I just want to make fun renders, basically. Um, my camera angle is very low, so I'm going to put 60 to make a bit flatter like this. Maybe 50. Yeah, I love marmosets for, for final renders, but yeah, some people consider marmoset more like a test render engine. Um, for me, it, it does what I need, you know? All right, so we have a light here. I'm going to double click the body and put a little bit of subsurface on it. Leticia, do you have any favorite kind of candy? Think mine Reese peanut butter cups. Oh yeah. Um, you know, I'm vegan, so it's most candies I cannot have. But I do love um, anything sweet, really. <laughs> so any vegan candy I, that I can eat, vegan chocolate, vegan um, uh, Oreo is vegan. Uh, I love them all. Yeah. Uh, okay, so let's put some subsurface here. So if we go to the transmission... I can use the volumetric subsurface or the regular subsurface. And uh, let's try volumetric, see what happens. Okay, so it's very intense right now, but you guys can see what's going on right now. Okay. One thing that you need to know is that the pumpkin itself, you see, the translucent seed is probably more orangey. Look at that. So, and the color I have here is a bit more pinkish. So I'm just gonna go a little bit more to the yellow orangey feel. And we have butter, yes. Even chocolate, love it. Uh, and then we can uh, play with the scatter depth, which is the depth of the scatter. So if I start going down, you see like this is no scatter. Then we add a little more. Oh, you see, starts getting too intense. Here, like super intense. But let's find that sweet spot. I just want to see a little bit of bleeding here. So, gonna increase slowly. Oh, it looks too much. Something like this, maybe. Check it out. So it has a little bit of skin shader going on inside. Yep. Yep. And um, let me move my light a little, see what's going on. Something like that. And maybe take the intensity of the light like that. Let me look at my reference again. Yeah, it's nice to make a very dark background to see it pop. You see? In this one, you can see the subsurface going through. You see how reddish it is, like on the top here. Um, the darker the environment, the more we're going to see that feeling. So what we can do, I'm going to put a, I'm going to find a dark bokeh background for us. So let's try something like. Mm -mm -mm. Let's see. It's a good one. Maybe let me go back to see it again. Yeah, you see that the lights are very like bouquet because the depth of the let me see here. Okay. Hello, I'm good. How are you, Tatum? How are you? You doing good? Got some good sleep. All right. So let me try to find something here. Maybe this one is dark enough. I should probably be looking for high res images. Huh? So let me go here on the size and put large. Okay. 
you know what I'm looking for at this point. Uh, uh. Cartoon good? Nice. We're doing some pumpkin here, pumpkin carving. Feel free to join. Make your pumpkins. I want to see it if you guys want to tag me so I can see it. I would love to see it. All right. Uh, let me get this one. I don't think it's going to work, but yeah, I don't think so. I'm going to just get anything really. Or for now, we can just come here and change the color, the background for a dark color on the night. And I feel like now that we made it super dark, I feel that we need more scatter going. A little more. Yeah. And maybe we can put one light in the back to kind of do a little silhouette on it. So let's try that out. So I'm going to add a new light. I'm going to use a directional light. Okay. And I'm going to put it from the back. This is my light. Just going to rotate and mold space here to the back. Like this. And put it in the back. Maya said, oh my God, I just got here and I've been uh, working on an add-on on Blender to create bouquet and I just came in here and saw you were looking at bouquet images. Yes, trying to find one for, for this, little, this little guy here. Okay, um, let's think about this. So, okay, let's see if this light is silhouetting. I think it's too high. We need it a little more flat like this to be able to... Yeah, starting to create a silhouette, you see? And uh, if we make it uh, the light a bit bigger, let me see, like we gotta go. You see how it's, now it's creating this super nice silhouette here on the back, like this little readability? That's always cool to do. All right. Um, Okay, so let me save this scene as well. It's good as well. Save here. Pumpkin light. And um, all right, let's find the uh, image again to put it in the back of any bucket image should do for us. I'm overthinking this. So let me find anything. Maybe this one is cool. It has this blue. Well, that's too much. Huh? <laughs> I'm struggling to find an image that I like here. Let's see. Let's try this. One. See what happens. So I'm going to save that. Let's see. Snowman. Pumpkin. Marmoset. Okay. Let's try something. So. There is a tool here uh, that you can do scene, add, and then you can do a, a backdrop. A backdrop is basically a plane that you can apply an image. So we can have it on the background like this. You see? So now we have that bouquet. I think for this to work, because it has a lot of blue, we might need to change our sky for a little more blue light. Uh, thank you, Tattoo. We might need to find a, a night with blue. Let's see. Night with blue. Maybe this one or this one. Let's see. I'm losing the shape too much. I don't like it. Don't like it. Don't like it. Um let's try another HRI. Mm -mm. This one maybe. Let's see. I don't want to lose my shapes, so I'm just trying to find a nice one that we can we can see those shapes. Mm, I don't know. 
Let's try a different one. Maybe I'm relying. When you not finding what you want, it means that you're probably relying too much on the HRI to do the job for you. That means you're being lazy. Um, I think this is the one I put right. Yeah, this one has a better shape. I like it better. Yeah. This. And uh, let me see the reference here that we just looked. Okay. We could potentially put a table on or something for it to be sitting in. Not sure. And like that. And then maybe we can put just a little table and we can make a bunch of different pumpkin. Uh, yeah, we might try to do our own lighting just to, to be sure. But I'm going to go back to the brush. Where do you get this AGRIs? Uh, it comes inside Marmoset, Maya. So a bunch of it is Marmoset. When you install Marmoset, it comes with it. So I normally don't, I only use the ones that are here because, you know, um, I don't need to go looking for it. But yeah, but there is a, a website called HDRI Haven, Haven, whatever it is. Uh, I can show you here if you type HDRI Haven. Um, you can see that it's just a ton of AGRIs here that you can download. Most of it, you can download a 4K version for free or 2K, I can't remember. Um, but uh, it's very cool. But I normally just use the ones that set gives because I'm lazy. Eba, Felipe is doing his own pumpkin as well. I want to see it. When you start working without any concept art, how do you start visualizing the light? for different scenes like portrait, product visualization, landscape. Normally you gotta collect a ton of reference tattoo. Like if you wanna do something from scratch, well done, you gotta collect a lot of reference. That would be the main thing I think, uh, my opinion is for you to make something cool, you gotta have a lot of reference. Um, so that that's how I do it at least. You can see even to make this simple pumpkin, I collected a good amount of reference here. Not a ton, but a good amount so we can, you know, have some fun. Um, all right, so let's make a little um, table here. All right, so I'm thinking some wood, wood plates. That could look cool. So I'm going to... I'll pan something here, and then I'm going to get a little QB. See the high, the resolution, that's fine. So I'm just going to make something. I think if we make a few wood planks and stack them, it's going to look cool. So a wood plank here. And we can subdivide this wood and just do um, put a little the saturated wood color here on it. And we can do, um, uh, draw some illustrations. Uh, we can try to use surface noise. I think surface noise has some wood. Let's see. Let's see what we can get from surface noise. Because I'm lazy today. So. I'm gonna frame it here so you can see there's that noise, but I want a different noise, more woody noise. So there's a noise plug here and it has a ton of different noises. So I think there's a wood one, here we go. So wood one, and you can see here what's going on on this window with the wood. And uh, let's see, I don't know how to use this, but we can just play around, see what happens. Frequency, amplitude, oh, god damn. Okay, do a little, little something like this. We can do a um, offset. I want to rotate, ooh, that's not what I want. Okay, okay, 
Got it now, Linda. All right. Okay, let's try something like this. There's a scale, blah, 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 blah. And then I'm going to say OK. And if we come back here, we have our main noise, which is this one, right? So I'm going to make it bigger to create some variation. I'm going to turn off the damn color because I don't want color or anything. Wait, is this the one? No, color is here. And then uh, what did I do? What did I break? Oh, here you go. All right. So we can do something like this, or we can do going up, going down. So it's not looking good, but I'm going to try. And then let's make this noise a bit bigger, like this. And we can uh, play with the strength of what is this? Mix, multiply. Oh, OK. You can do that, and uh, you can play with the strength of it. I mean, it's not the main object, so it might be fine. It's had a little bit of a extra feeling like this. And it'll say OK and see what happens. So you can see it breaks a little, the stuff. Is it great? No. But it's going gonna, it's gonna to have to do it. So I'm going to say apply to mesh. And I need to subdivide this mesh to be able to have it. Apply, almost. Apply. All right, now we have the, those details there. And now I'm going to add just the noise again. So I'm going to edit. I'm going to turn off the noise plug and just add a little overall noise variation on it. All right, something like this, just to break it up the wood a bit more. Let's say OK. Then I'm going to apply. Turn on again, apply again. Wow. That is great. All right, whatever. I'm going to leave it like this. And then let's duplicate this. Let me go down one level to see. It's not the main thing. We're going to blur it. so. I'm going to keep it pretty. So I'm going to duplicate, push it up, do a little rotation, hold shift, rotate like this. OK. Something like that. Control shift D again, put it on one here. And we can we can break a little bit so we can make a little changes and things. And you know, remember, it's just, just gotta try to make it just a bit more organic and then should be good to go. All right, let's pretend that's that. And let's make one more pumpkin here. Like this is the kid. Let's make a, a scary one, father pumpkin, something like that. So let me get my pumpkin. So this is my original pumpkin. I'm going to move it to the side here. Let's make the kid and the mom and the dad, maybe something like this. So just like two dads or two moms, something. Does I need to know? Um, okay. So I'm going to duplicate my stem. And uh, I'm going to turn off the kid for now. Well, you know, let me put it the kid in the folder. So new folder, I'm going to call it kid, the stem inside. And uh, transpose set, put here on the side. And then we can use this one to make our, our new. So for this next one, I'm going to make a tall one. So it's going to be taller, this. I'm thinking a little more squarish, something like that. Gonna have a little belly. And we can give a little little shape like that. Uh, let's move the stem up. 
since the stem is kind of like the hair, we can think of it like what kind of hair the this one would have. We can uh, work on that, but let's think about the face. Amira said, um, if, he, if I want to make a stylized scene, do I need to a stylized AGRI or any AGRI will fit? It depends, like if you want to make stylized lighting on your scene, you might want to get a very neutral uh, AGRI and then you make your lights to, to make it uh, more colorful or more contrasty and add stylization to the lights, you know. And that would be my suggestion. Okay. Something like that. That's cool. All right. Um, Tato said, yeah, as you use the selection breath and isolate the part. Oh, yeah. You can create some dots on the button for the old pumpkin to show that they're old. That's true. Yeah, we can age the texture. That's a great idea. So I'm going to do that right now. I'm going to get my dot brush and I'm going to get like a darker color and I'm just going to, you know, add a little more age to their skin. That was a great idea. Thank you. So I'm going to add a bit more age dots here on it. A bit darker on the bottom, a bit old. Like that. Yeah, that contrast as well. And... We can make the crevices a bit darker as well. Like I'm going to get some darker red and maybe add a bit more on the crevices like this. And that would age the pumpkin as well. Something like that. Make a few like Hero dots maybe here and there just to make a bit more stylized. And isolate the body so I can add the crevices. Pumpkin family. Yes, this is a pumpkin family. All right, so we add a bit more. Okay, I think it's aged enough. That was a great idea. Um, I envisioned the top of it and um, moved a bit to the right to make a C shape like it's deformed. You mean this, the, the stem? Oops, good idea. Stem could be falling a bit like this. Maybe this one has a, a longer, and maybe the green bit gonna be just a bit smaller, and maybe on the other side, just a little bit like that. Ew, that's horrible. Okay. Maybe like that. Yeah. Um, maybe we can rotate the whole thing to the other side, maybe like this, so it just doesn't feel exactly like the kid. Or maybe to the back. To the back looks good. Yeah. Let's put it in the back like this. Hair's going back. All right, so now let's make the dad face, or might not be a dad, might be like, you know, just a tall friend or something. Um, I'm thinking maybe this one could have a nose as well. Um, just thinking about it. He's very into Halloween, then, so he's gonna have a, a very Halloween face, I guess. Let me try something here. Uh, okay, so I'm gonna make uh, without symmetry, which is nice. I'm just gonna make one shape here for the eyes like this. So 
try something like this, and then one eye here, and then the other one's gonna be here. Maybe, no, maybe it's gonna be even more arch. Let me think about it. You gotta try a few different variations. So let's see something. Do this. That is horrible. I'm not gonna do that. Do like this. Then one eye here. One eye here. We can take this off like this. This one's gonna be a bit more scary. He's very into Halloween, the dead. So he's really playing the part. Um, one thing that I find very cute is when people do this stuff, but then they they um, carve the eyes out like this. So that's gonna be the eyes. And he's gonna have a big open mouth. Uh, let me think what kind of shape of mouth I wanna do. <laughs> Thinking here. Maybe something like this could be cool, like um uh, like that. That could be cool. Hello, Sandra. How's it going? All right, so let me make my brush a bit bigger. I can paint this off a bit better. Okay, maybe something like that could be cool for the mouth. And he's going to have maybe a little nose as well. Like this. What do you guys think? I'm going to make it sharp. Sharp, sharp, sharp. If you want to make it scary, got to sharp those angles. Maybe here it needs to be sharper. Like that. Sharper here on the side. And like that. And then um, let's take, we could give some teeth. Some like teeth like this. Mm -hmm. And then some, some teeth back here. I'm gonna clean it up, don't worry. And then we can come here with the mask and just sharp it up a bit. So. On the top. And strokes, you can use the lazy mouse tattoo. If you if you feel like your hand uh, kind of shakes a little when you're modeling when you when you're painting stuff, you can uh, use lazy mouse in to clean that up. Um, I use lazy mouse a lot of times. What do you guys think of this? Maybe the two the teeth needs to be bigger, a little bigger on the top here. <laughs> Yeah, maybe something more like that. Are you using tablet or mouse? I'm using a regular tablet. A, um, I think it's called Intos 5. Yeah, that's the one I'm using it right now. I use mouth a lot when I'm blocking out shapes, but when I need precision to kind of like do what I'm doing, I prefer using um, the tablet, yeah. All right, what do you guys think of that? I think that's looking pretty good. So let's do our extraction here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate this just so we don't lose it. 
And um, again, same thing that we did. I think it worked pretty well the way we did before. So I'm going to duplicate and then I'm going to uh, go to extract thickness of zero. And I'm going to, the smoothness is how much it's going to smooth my, my mask. So if you don't like how smooth it got, I'm just going to put like maybe two or three. And I'm going to say extract. So you see now, where is our extraction? Did I extract? Oh, no, I said, I need to say extract, and then I need to say accept. And I did invert it, which is not what we want. So I'm going to delete that. I'm going to go back to my thing, invert my mask, extract, accept. And remember, we got to project a color. So I'm going to go down here to project and say, turn off the stem and say project only color. Yes. Did it work? What did I do? Here, you project the color. So that's great. You see the smooth made my things a bit smoother, but that's all right. We can fix that. So, all right. So now uh, we can uh, turn this one off. Turn the other stuff in. That's great. And now we're going to give the thickness the same way we did before, where we go to dynamic subdivision. I'm going to turn off. I'm going to add thickness to it. But I'm going to do offset to minus 100 so it goes in. We can do the amount of thickness we want. So it's nice and pretty. Right. So um, we could put a candle inside here, model a candle, just so it looks, you can see the candle body there. What I'm going to do now, it's uh, I'm going to apply my, um, my dynamics of division so we can go around smoothing a little bit, making a bit more organic like this. And just clicking around very, very little. It's kind of like, you know, Add that those organic feeling to it. Brush safe. All right. Cool. We did that. Um, now I'm just gonna go to some of the corners and and such, and just like try to clean it up a bit. So we can go here, for example, and make this corner a bit feel a, feel a little sharper. Overall, uh, same thing here on this corner here. Just wanted to feel a little more angular and sharp, so it feels more scary. For the eyes, we can make it a little rounder. Okay, a bit more corner here. And on the mouth. For the teeth, I'm going to make it a bit sharper. I think overall this extraction technique worked pretty well to make the quick, quick dis decisions here. I'll make the teeth sharper, you know, a little bit more corners. All right. Smooth inside here. Cool. All right, so let's add some noise. It doesn't have noise yet. So I'm going to go subdivide probably one time. And then I'm going to go to the noise maker. Same thing we did before. I'm going to do it again if you didn't see it. I'm going to turn off the color. So I can see the noise. I'm going to make the noise much bigger, like that much. And then the strength, I'm just going to have. This one, because the old one, I'm going to keep the strength a bit higher. Something like that. And we say, OK. And now we have our, our noise inside. Cool. Those woods are horrible. But fine. We have an artist at Noman working in Blender. I do not know. I think so. I think Noman must have some Blender classes. but. Um, I, um, uh, I'm going to apply it in the mesh. 
I work here on a stream, so I don't know if in Nomen if they're what what they're up to there, to be honest. So, all right. So let's let's bring this to Marmoset and render to see what happens. Maybe his hair needs to be a little more taller, a bit more aggressive, like something like that. I think that's what feels more aggressive. And then our kid, our kid can be a little more cutesy like that, his hair. A little wavy hair like this. That's cool. Um, Oops, let me just push this down. I don't want to see too much of the vine. Uh, uh, Homo sapiens said we could put some traces of the knife that cuts the wanted shape. Like if he did a roll and we didn't have control of the pressure on the carving at some point and he went that far away. Yeah, that's true. The, uh, Daria said the inside needs to be a different color. Yeah. It might have to be actually like looking at some reference. Let's look at some reference here. Um, the meat is a bit brighter, right? I don't know. Let's see here. Ah! Pumpkin carved. Let's see. And the meat's a bit brighter. Isn't it very interesting? Uh, bright color. We might want to do that. Let's try it. I'm going to get on the kid. The cool thing is that, well, I was going to say something, but it's not true. Wait, I have the, the, the cutout, see, polygroup. Oh, yeah. Look at that. So we can make this a bit more yellowish. Like this. Check it out. That's cool. Let me see what is the inside color of it. The inside is pretty orangey. So is this the, yeah, I'm just going to make the, uh, the cutout a bit more yellow. Like that. I think that might be cool. Maybe it's too yellow. And like that. I use them to draw eyebrows and details under the eyes. I want to see Filippi. I'm doing those knife cut mistakes on it and it looks cute. I use them to draw eyebrows and details under the eyes. Uh, I want to see. All right, let's bring things to Marmoset. And then, uh, Filippi, send to me the what you did so I can see, please. Well, I want to see if. All right, let's uh, export this to Marmoset. So I'm just going to name it, remember? So this guy is going to be big guy. I'm going to call him big guy and big guy's hair. Big guy hair. And now I'm going to export. So if we go to zip plugin, export. Cute pumpkin. I kind of just export everything together. It's fine. Exporting now. Felipe, uh, send to me on Instagram so I can see, please. Oh, yeah, you sent to me. Thank you. Let me see. Oh, that's nice. Okay, I love it. We're going to do it. Okay. I'm going to do it what Filippi did so you guys can see. It looks pretty cool. All right. Um, I finished my pumpkin earlier, too, because I didn't have more scent. No worries. You can make more pumpkins. We still have half an hour here. To go. I love it, FIFA. It's very cute. Let's 
uh, writing the data, it's going slow because I subdivide those woods a ton, which is very unnecessary, to be honest. But we'll see what happens. All right. The data export. I think I'm going to have to lower the resolution on this wood shit here. Boom, 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 boom. You use orbit cracks? Nice. I'm going to try that out as well. Oh God, what's going on? What's going on? Let's, let's wait for ZBrush to finish this. I'm sure, oh, I see. It's like, I have 22 million followers on this thing. That's not good. Um. That's why it's taking so long. That's why I gotta be careful when you subdivide to add those noise details because you might end up having a ton of polygon. Oh man, I need to save it. So, and that's the live for today. No, I'm joking. All right, I think oh, still going. Come on now. Oh my god, I really did it this time, really did it. So it happens when you're having fun. I think it has two more subtools to go. <laughs> All right, file export. All right, so I'm going to delete those woods. Just going to keep one for now. Delete this one, delete this one. All right, and now delete. Now we can just get this one, make it bigger like this. Gonna go lower on subdivisions. Yeah, that's good enough, doesn't matter. Oops, I wanna delete subdivisions, delete higher. We just do like a board like this for now. It's better. All right, now we have way less uh, things to worry about. And let me see, I think I can even go lower on this wood here. No one's gonna care. All right, so now we have lighter um, models. Let's try this again. I'm going to export. Okay, now it should go much faster. All right, it's almost done. Sorry if this is a bit off topic, but I'm having a lot of trouble balancing the time I spend practicing and learning new skills and the time I spend trying to work on my portfolio and create some high quality renders. Do you have any tips on what I should focus more on? Maybe 50-50? That's a great question, Maya. What I normally do is that, let's say I want to study hair. 
So I make a small project, like a bust or something, and then I do some tests with hair, like X-Gen or, or mod modeling hair. So that means that you're still going to have a project at the end that you might want to put in your portfolio. You're also studying at the same time. So it's kind of like what you said, 50-50 is a bit of both worlds, you know? So I think that's the way I like to study is always making a project. And like, let's say I want to test some stylized texture. So I make some simple uh, and then I try to apply those stylized textures ideas to that simple shapes, you know, is that, is that helpful at all? Um, I hope that that's uh, clear what I'm saying. Uh, okay, so let's go back in Marmoset just to see. And uh, this guy is going to move because I, I took him out of the center of the world. All right, so now we have these two guys here. And uh, we can apply the same shader. So I'm going to put pumpkin here. I'm going to put stem here. And now we have that going on. I'm going to put the light more on the floor. That's going to be cool. And we can duplicate this light and put one here for the key. And now we have both characters. And maybe we can do, I don't think we have time to do one more, but maybe we can refine the ones that we have. Like, uh, let me save this. We can do a version with the, um, oh, we have the wood so that we need to put the color. And then I'm going to break the roughness on this. And okay. Um, and yeah, maybe yeah. We don't have maybe we don't have time for another pumpkin, but we can play a little bit of adding some details on it. So I'm just gonna make this table a bit bigger and uh, whatever. Like this and then the what what Felipe did, which I think is pretty cool, and we can try it, is basically like he got the orbits brush. You can download; it's not from Zebra, so the name is Orb Orb Cracks. You can find it on the internet, and we can just like cut around. You see some some cuts like this, and we can give them maybe some some brows and RGB on. Oh, it's not painting. painting at the same time. Not sure why it's not. Let's see what's going on here. Huh? Well, I don't know. But if we want to do a few cuts like this, like do a little brow on him, this, and we can do a few cuts like, like something here, a little more intense in the mouth. And little cuts like that to you like this and we can go around just adding a few more more details i'm going to lower the intensity and just like add a few more um details especially on the face area it's nice to kind of like add a little more complexity to it do it like this and um uh, Yeah, something like that. Keep a bit deeper. Like this. And now I can get my paintbrush. I'm not sure why it's not painting at the same time. And then we can just go around and paint on the crevices a little bit. How many software do you use in total, including production work and personal work? Many. I think... Um, I use a lot of uh, ZBrush, as you all know. Then I use a ton of uh, Marmoset to do render. I use um, Substance Painter to do some texturing. Um, Photoshop is always a good one to do little details here and there for stuff. Um, I use Blender sometimes for like Mostly I'm still learning Blender. I'm not great at it, but I do like to use Blender sometimes to, to study. 
Um, yeah, not more than that. <laughs> I don't know anything more, I feel like. We can do a little more yellowish uh, dots here. I'm going to try something, make a little more. Oops. A few more variation on the texture for the kid as well. I'm going to make a bit brighter on the top and yellowish. And then the bottom's a bit more orangey. Something like this. And then our guy. I feel like on our guy, we should just make the stem like completely going up. I mean, I'm gonna try to make it completely going up so so it's it's very intense. His hair is up like that, sharp, you know? It's a lot of a uh, think about gesture, you know, like the intensity of the pose. So can get this and rotate a bit more. Yeah, that feels more intense and sharp. Something like that. And um, cool. And I like. Let's add some cuts on this guy as well. So I'm gonna get my orbit crack here, and on him we can add way more. Right? We get be more intense on it. Do a little cut here in the nose, a few cuts like this. You can go way crazier on him. Uh, do Disney have their own software that is not allowed anywhere else? Um, yes, for texturing, for example, Disney has its own its own software for texturing. Uh, what else? I think it has its own thing for like uh, simulation as well. Uh, yeah, so yes, the answer is yes. We do have specific stuff. Yeah, Disney uses uh, P-Tex for texturing, which is, um, a way to do it that you don't need UVs. So it's very helpful. Well, it all has its pros and cons, I'll say, you know, but it works well for the Disney pipeline, I'd say. Yeah. All right, now, uh, let's see what else we can do to push a bit more stuff thinking if maybe change the angle here to make a bit more aggressive on the dead something like that and then our kid he very cute i think that's that let's uh, send it back to marmoset see what happens i'm gonna save it because it's been a while In the shadows that had warmer shadows, which had, was built by Disney. Wait, did you say no new no news for UVs? How does that work? It's just a hundred percent procedure. It's a it's a tech, it's a thing called P Tex, and uh, P Tex is um it's a way to there's no UVs. It's vertex based. It's, it's very much so like poly paint. You see where basically it takes each polygon that you have and apply its own density of texture. So it's very procedural, yes. I don't know if I'm explaining well, but you get the idea. I'm gonna add a bit more uh, age to our guy here. A bit more dots on it. All right. Let's take these babies to Marmoset and see what happens. I think I'm going to make our little kid just a bit smaller. So I'm going to uh, scale down a little. Maybe, maybe let's do like this. We have a small kid like this. And then, eh, no, 
I was thinking something, but I don't think it's going to work. Okay. Yeah, a bit more scale change. I think it's just doing good for him looking a bit more to that. All right, let's export this because we're running out of time. So I'm going to save one more time. All right, let's go to export. Marmoset, pumpkins. Let's write the data. All right, I think. It's done. File exported. Yeah. So if we go back now to Marmoset, should update our scene. All right. And uh, this light needs to come inside more of a little baby. Cool. And because it's a baby down, you can see that the subsurface is. is uh, Brighten it up a little more from the inside. So one thing we can do is just uh, lower the intensity of the that light. So we can test it out. What's going on here? But now we have our our. our scene. And uh, we have about ten more minutes, so. I think it could be cool to uh, make a scene in the, during the day as well. So one thing I'm going to do is to turn on depth of field because it might blur this table, this horrible table I made. So this is kind of like a scene. I think I'm going to do more down angle like this. And do we have our CD white light? You see? So what I might do is just a bit more so we can see more that silhouette going on, which is very nice. I think I need a little like that. Yeah. So that's kind of one thing we can do. And uh, let's do some depth of field here. So I'm going to go add some ray trace depth of field. So you can see that it blurs everything. But we, if we mid, middle mouse click where the focus is, which is kind of like here in the face of our characters, and now we can just choose the focal distance. Well, the focal distance is. Let's see. Uh, your PC doesn't like translucency. Yes, <laughs> it does not. Uh, uh, Maya said, it kind of looks like an angry parent defending their child. Yes, that's a good idea. I strongly wish to study a Nomen, but due to the lack of finance, I can't take admissions or can't even afford Nomen workshop. Thanks to the artist and Nomen for live streaming for us new art. Of course, yeah, this is the idea for the live stream, you know, is to give a little bit of, of uh, um, some fun, you know, some Nomen fun. So, hmm. All right, so let's let's play with this uh, uh, depth of field here. So this is like with almost none. So I'm just gonna add a bit more back, and you can see they're starting to blur the table here, which is what I want. This ugly, nasty table I made, uh, but the faces are in focus, kind of. the The hair here is not so much. I do not like this bouquet that I chose. I'm gonna be honest with you all. So let me look just one more time for one that I might like. Might be something more like this or. Let's try something. God damn it. I'm not good at this stuff. Uh, mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. 
I got this one right already. So let's see what happens with this. So I'm going to save it here. And I'm going to switch the, the background just to see if it looks better. What did I save? I thought it save in here. Save image. Web file. No, no. Let me find one. Let's try this one. It's more yellowish. Web file. All right. Uh, maybe this could be cool. Let's see. Ooh. Not horrible. Bit, bit fun, right? I don't know. Um, let me see what they turn this off. No, we gotta keep it. Okay, so what do you guys prefer? This one? I'm gonna add more angle to the camera because then we I'm gonna do like 40 just to give more perspective. Maybe 35 millimeters, and then we can have a little more angle like this. I think it's calling too much attention the background, but I'm not. Now nah, I'm gonna keep this one. That's fine. Okay. Why sound is distorting? It might be because it's rendering. I'm sorry, that's happening. It might be because I'm rendering stuff. Um, I think that's that for, for it. I'm not going to overthink this too much. One thing we can do is add some grain. The cool thing about Marmoset, it has some pose effects that are nice. So we can do, for example, some exposure to bright it up everything a bit. One cool thing, we can do some um, flare strength. I don't know what's doing our thing. She's great. We can add some uh, chromatic aberration. You all know I love some chromatic aberration, so I'm going to add a lot. We can add some sharpness, some bloom. Oh, look at that. Bloom, 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 bloom. Bonk, bonk, bonk. So I'm going to add a little bit of bloom, which is nice. Look at that. And uh, some vignette. can darken everything a bit. And we can make it softer like this. So we darken the surroundings of our, of our thing. And then we get add some grain, which I love some grain. Check it out. Got some photo grain here. I'm going to make my aspect ratio 1920 by 1920, just so it's a, it's a square. 20. All right, so now we have a more squarish um, cut, cut, smooth Instagram. I have that. And, uh, and now uh, you can add some noise. Like I said, like I like this marmoset has some very nice distro noise that's going to make it look like old film. And we can do some dirt. You see some dirt appearing here? So we can add more density of dirt on our render. Like this, it might be too much, but I'm gonna add some and then just test it out. Make it like this. Dirt intensity, push it down. Cool. We can increase contrast maybe. And oh, no, it's too much. So contrast like this, so maybe wash it out a little bit. Might be cool. So, you know, I'm just playing. I like the bloom. The bloom is very cool. Can change the size of the bloom as well. So the bloom in Marmoset, if you have contrast lighting, it, it works very well, as you can see. Like, it's very bloomy, which is cute. Um, and I'm going to say that the snippet. I'm going to make up a kid who can hear from, and the guy is kind of screaming at someone inside. And um, we have some depth of field, we have some noise, have some grain, it's all working. So I'm going to save the scene and just do a render. One forgot. Um, Sabrina, my friend. Sabrina is late, super late. 
You missed some pumpkin carving here, okay? Uh, one thing I forgot last time was to show you all, um, I don't think I showed on the live the result of our robots. Did I? Uh, let me get here. Um, I'm gonna increase some sharpness here on the render. It's too much. Okay, here we go. Uh, but one thing I forgot to show was our bots that we finished. So I'm just gonna do a little quick around uh, if you all wants to see here. This is the bot we finished, and I because we had Caleb last week, I kind of forgot to show the result of our little robot. So this is the action pose. This is the hero pose, which was the theme with hero. So we needed a hero pose for Sid. This is Sid admiring his toy version so kids can buy it and stuff. So they're like, yeah, man, so cool. And then we have all of them together. We have high Sid going around. This is a little turnaround of a Sid. Gray shader. And uh, some some turntable, and this was a, a Gillette Productions that you can see here. It was Chris and I, my husband. I did the modeling and the posing. He did all the texturing and all the lighting for me, which is so so nice because he's much better at that stuff than I am. So um, that's what we got. We all right. That was project, and this is our project of today. And I'm just gonna render it so we can see the final result. So uh, I'm gonna render on the our folder, Roman pumpkin. I'm gonna call this um, pumpkin card life, and uh, save it as JPEG, and then we just enter. It. Let's see how it goes. Uh, and if you all carve some pumpkins today with me, please tag me on Instagram if you decide to post or anything. I would love to see what you guys did. I hope you had fun. I sure had. And uh, let's see our pumpkin here. I render it. So if I open, ta da! Here's a fun image. Woohoo! So two hours we carved some pumpkins. We could keep carving more and more and, and you know do a little stack of pumpkins here. But I think it was pretty cool. What do you all think? Again, if you did it, um please tag me on Instagram. I'll love to see it. And uh I think we're almost done. What's my Instagram? Let me uh Look, put it here. Here's my Instagram. Oh, it's there. So that's my Instagram. If anyone wants to tag me, please tag me. I would love to see what you guys did. Um, uh, and I hope you all had fun. I sure did. And uh, make more if you want. You can put, we can push it this so much more, you know. It's like the first ones are always a bit like try. But if we keep carving, we're going to make more and more fun stuff, which will be cool. Um, yeah. Any final questions? Elisa, she said, thanks for the company, of course. And it was great to have you all here. And uh, tag me. Yeah, Gillick Production Diary. That's our, our production. Uh, the Instagram is here on the screen. I think that's all. I'm just gonna open our final image here for a little carving. I'm gonna put it here on the top. This is kind of like just for fun. Put some bouquet, some noise, yada yada, and then it's all good to go. All right. Um, I will see you all next Sunday. One thing to know is that next Sunday would be my last Sunday on the stream. So. Uh, Another person is going to start streaming for the R type, which is going to be super exciting and fun. And uh, I can't wait to watch it. And I'm not going to say who it is because I, Norman, I think Norman's going to announce. But I'm going to take a break and some time off, uh, you know, and give space for other people to shine 
and um, it's been great having you all here. As you all know, we have a lot of fun, but you know, sometimes you gotta take some time in life to adjust your things. <laughs> Let's just put it that way. And that's what I'm doing. I'm just trying to adjust my life and, and then um, create more space for uh, free time and, and for other things to happen, you know. But again, we I can't say who it is, but it's going to be an amazing person that's going to take over from me. It is not Caleb. Don't ask if it's Caleb. It's not him. But it's another amazing person. And you're going to have as much fun as you had with me even more probably you know so if you want to say bye to me next sunday uh join me and then we're gonna do a little bit of like just chatting and sculpting next sunday it's gonna be very informal but we can have some final conversations and questions if you guys have any and that's about it cool <laughs> it's gonna continue being the best time of the week Daria. it's just not gonna be me it's gonna be someone even better and nicer i'm sure of it <laughs> cool all right so next sunday don't forget we can all say goodbye and cry and uh eat cookies and then yeah we're gonna have some other fun people here all right i'm gonna put the the super fun video from Nomen to play and i see you all next sunday bye everyone <laughs>